diagnosis, infidelity above anything else, we cannot lose our close connection with them. There's nothing as important as the relationship of a man with his land or a woman with his land. Making sure that we're connected in such a way that we're affectionate to the land, that we're passionate with the land, that we have an unbreakable relationship with the land, that we cherish and commune with the land, that it becomes such a bond with the land, that it's our family member who lives and dwells with us. The poor man said, Brother Dennis, the lamb's not my daughter. You know what he was saying? She's like a part of my life of every day that I have a good bond with. Jesus. I think one of the most heart wrenching things is when folks no longer have the relationship with God that they once had. And listen, that could be each one of us this morning. None of us are exempt. So what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The lamb stops drinking out of our cup. And the lamb starts, stops eating at our plate. The lamb stops sleeping in our bed. We've gained lots of other things now, and so it's not important. The most important thing that we should have in life is a relationship with the land. I'm quickly closing. I grew up on a little farm. My dad worked with a full-time job, and as a collaborative effort, my grandma and my uncle and my dad worked together on a little farm. And uh, there were several times on the farm as a boy, I had a fond love for animals, but my dad didn't have the same outlook on animals as I had. You see, there would be times that calves would be born and they would need to be bought fed. Sister Tina, I would make them my little pet, my little baby. There's times that my dad would be raising rabbit beagles. And Brother Josh, I would love those little puppies, and there would always be one that would find a special place in my young, tender heart as a boy. And so what, what I was in for and what my dad was in for was different. You see, when a cow was fed and it was ready, it would go off the sand. Dad would cry over it. I would miss that cow. Come December, when it was time for butchering, they would lose out with me. You know, we would execute the cow. And uh, that was tough for me as a little boy because I liked that bull, uh, that steer. I liked that. It, it had become, I fed a grain from my hand. I, 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 I cleaned its stall. I made sure it had water. I made sure it had hay. It was different. See, some people come into church. They come to the things of God. Not to build a bond with the relationship. Because they're in the front business. God's not called us for our business. Sister Holly, if you come in the God's not called us for our business. But God has called us for our business. Growing up, we had an Irish setter. Love that dog. Her name was Missy. And she could do tricks, she'd shake her hand. She'd shake my hands, put them all up. I go out on the ground and wrestle around with her. I was young, I climbed up her to help box with her, you know, all that crazy stuff. I love that dog. She's going to have puppies. We were really excited. Can you imagine? Puppies. We like that around our house. And so one day we were out walking, and a car was driving down the road, and Missy ran out front of that car. Got hit. Didn't hurt her, didn't kill her. 
We knew she was going to have puppies in one day. Sister Better, Missy was gone. Missy was gone. I said to Mom, I'm like, Mom, where's Missy? She must have went away to have puppies. I heard that story for almost 25 years. <laughs> Missy never came back. I said, Mom, I wonder what ever happened to her. Mom looked at me by the day and she said, Bobby, I never had the heart to tell you this. But she died. She must have been trying to have her puppies and she died. I didn't have the heart to tell you and your sister. So I had your dad and your mother take her away to her. You know what? Because that would have broke a little boy's heart. Because he had a bond. Can't say that I feel that way so much about animals today, but it was real to me. But in life, life changes a lot of things. There are goodbyes, and there's a low, and there's ups, there's downs. There's disappointments in how we think that God should work. When we've got all that we can do to know that we've done our best, but God's plans have been different. There's been some straying away on our own because we went chasing after dreams when God wanted us to stay. If we're not careful, we'll wind up being like David and devalue the Lamb. I want you to know that there's a Lamb of God sitting upon the throne this morning and He desires for each and every one of us to have a bond with Him. He doesn't want us to categorize Him and act like it's our job or act like it's another relationship or feel like there's no importance. But God wants us to love that Lamb. Amen. He wants us to love Him. He wants us to eat with Him and drink with Him and sleep with Him and commune with Him that He is one of the family. Simply this morning, I want to say this. How is your relationship with the Lamb? How is your bond with the Lamb? Only you can answer that. This morning, would you strengthen it? Would you build it? Would you make it in a place of prayer? Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Would you make a bond with the Lamb? Would you take them home with you? Everywhere that you go, will the Lamb be sure to go? Will He eat? Come on, gather in. Will He sleep? Will He drink? Will He be as a dog to you? Amen. Come this morning and bond with the Lamb. Let's gather in. The Lamb will